Hi guys, welcome back for another eye review video. So today we're going to do an African style peri peri chicken. African style peri peri chicken differs slightly to the mainland Portuguese one. In mainland Portugal they use just a roasted chicken with some oil flavour of pimento maligato. The African Mozambique and Golan style peri peri chickens have more ingredients and the more depths of flavour. So I hope you enjoy. Alright, so the first step of peri peri chicken is I'm going to do a brine. So to start off the brine, I'm going to put some salt into a saucepan. I've got some cider vinegar. I've got some brown sugar. And then for the aromatics, we've got some bay leaves. We've got about six or seven sprigs of thyme. One garlic in half. One liter of water. So I'm just going to get that off and bring it up to the boil. So when the brine's cooking, we're going to spatchcock the chicken. I want you to take off the knuckles and the wing tips. Now to spatchcock the chicken, we bring it back up. So that's the back of the chicken. We get a really sharp knife. And then you cut down. Turn around and then you cut down the other side. This is not going to go to waste. The knuckles and the wing tips and the back I'm going to use for chicken stock. Using your sharp knife, I want you to kind of come in and get the bones out, the rib bones. Just going to turn off the brine. I'm just going to add in the lemons. And this is going to take a little while to cook. So I want to bring that down to room temperature. Now back to the chicken. Just take out the rib bones from the other side. So we still got the breast plate. You can see it here. That's this part here, it's kind of like a cartilage. So I want you with your knife to feel your way in. And you can come around. Now, you're just scraping all that meat back, just cutting it back, make sure there's nothing left in the bone. And you do the same on the other side. Also the wing joints you need to cut through. Just the wishbone out. Yeah, there we go. Chicken spatchcock. So I'm gonna put these into a saucepan. Now you don't have to add any aromatics to this. All the aromatics are gonna be in the sauce, which we use the stock for the sauce. Now the next part with the brine. I need to bring that down to room temperature. Once it's down to room temperature, I'm going to chill in the fridge for a couple hours. With the chicken stock, put in about maybe two liters of water, and then up to the heat, and let it simmer for about two hours. And then we're going to strain it, and then we're going to juice it by half. Okay, our brine's now chilled down, so we just need to brine the chicken. I always use a plastic or a glass container, and that's because sometimes if you use a metal container, it, it actually reacts with the brine. Yeah, so I'm going to get that all in, make sure. It's at the bottom, lift it up, put it back down, make sure it's submerged. Put a lid on this. So I'm gonna put that in the fridge for about four hours. If you want a really good brine, and you want that brine to work well, you can leave it overnight. Now it's time for the sauce. We've got about 15 uh, red ladyfinger chilies that I've just blackened underneath the grill. We've got one red onion, extra virgin olive oil, some black pepper, some garlic, red wine vinegar, lemon zest, some lemon juice, uh, some smoked paprika, We've got some dried oregano, uh, chopped fresh bay. If you can't get fresh bay, it's okay. You can use dry bay, just soak it in some warm water for a little while till it rehydrates and you can chop it up. And then we've got some thyme. Start things off, just gonna bring this up to about a medium high heat. Add the olive oil in. Now this is really, really simple. So basically we're putting all the ingredients into the saucepan, letting it infuse for about five, six minutes so all those flavors can get together. Take it off, let it cool. We're gonna blitz it and then we're going to put half the sauce back in and then the other half we're going to use for the chicken while it's cooking. Just give it a little wee, wee bit of a stir. Normally when your onions start to get soft, it's, it's time to take it off the heat. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of salt, about a teaspoonful, and that's it. All right, so the next step is to make our sauce and marinade. So the chicken bones I had done earlier, all I did was cover them in water and simmer them for about two hours. And this is what we're left with. As you can see, all that kind of stops reduced and all the flavors come out of the chicken. I'm just gonna strain it off. Put it back in the saucepan. And then I'm going to reduce that. This is the pear pear ingredients that we infused earlier on. It's now cold. So what we need to do now is just blend into a nice puree. Okay, so this is smooth paste. I'm gonna take some of this out to use for the chicken as a marinade, the base of what we're cooking. So I'm gonna take a note, 
not for I think be, but maybe a third to half I'm gonna take out to use for the chicken. And then the rest I'm gonna put back into the pot to use for the sauce. The chicken stock's are juice, I'm just gonna pour it into the blender. Just an easy way to uh, get everything out. So you get all that lovely flavors. Pour that into the peri peri marinade like this. And then we turn this on to a medium to low heat. And here's a look at our chicken that we brined overnight. As you can see, the brine's really gone into it. You can see it's changed the color on the outside. And some lovely aromas there from the lemon, thyme, herbs, and the uh, vinegar. So I'm just gonna take that out and pat it dry. We've got a charcoal pan on. We're gonna bring it up to high. I'm gonna get some oil. So we're all starting to smoke. Just gonna get the chicken down, skin side down first. And we get a nice seal on that. So the chicken's been sealing now for about four minutes on a really high heat. Just gonna check it. Yeah, and that's starting to come around now. There's the seal on that as well. I'm just gonna start getting the, the peri peri marinade on it now. So we'll get in every little piece is covered in there. But now you have a choice. You can either take this off the pan and put it into a tray and into the oven. With this, I'm gonna put it in the way it is. So we're going to leave that in the oven at 200 degrees for 45 minutes and every 10 or 15 minutes or so we're going to baste it with the, with the rest of the uh, marinade. So we're going to serve some roasted sweet potato wedges. I'm going to get that into the bowl. Olive oil. Some salt and pepper. Make sure it's all coated. Now we're going to get these on the tray. Just put a little bit of oil there. Spread it around because I want to put them skin side down. Bang these in the oven. I'm going to salt the cabbage. Teaspoon and a quarter of salt. I'm going to mix all that up and then we're going to leave that on the side for about 15 to 20 minutes. Third and final component, I'm going to do a peri peri and honey roasted corn in the cup. So in the same bowl, I have the sweet potatoes, a little bit of olive oil. I'm going to put a little bit of the peri peri marinade, about a half a cup of honey. Make sure it's all nice and coated. So a little bit of salt. Get it trade up. We just get that over it. And then we'll pop that in the oven for about 20 minutes. So I've just taken the chicken out of the oven. So the next thing we need to do with this is just rest for 15 minutes. I'm just going to put on a wooden board, just put some tin foil over it, and leave it there to rest. So if you look at this now, it's starting to release some of the moisture, and the cabbage is a lot softer than it was earlier. So I'm just going to add that into a larger bowl, and I'm going to add in spring onions, shredded carrot, with a tablespoon of whole grain mustard, and about a cup full of thick yogurt. Just give it a good mix. So let's see how we're getting on with the chicken. That's nice and rested now. I'm gonna get that into there. So I'm gonna carve it up. I'm gonna take the drumstick from the thigh. Take that out. I'm gonna take the drumstick off. Do the same here. there we go. You spread it around. Now, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see how moist that is? Like the, the juices just come out of that as you squeeze it. That's because of the browning. So the browning helps retain the uh, moisture while cooking. Remember we only took that breast bone out, cut it in half, we don't have to deal with it now. So you get a clear cut. And then I'm gonna cut the breasts in half, like that. Take the wings off. So, now I'm gonna spread that around. You can see the moisture from the, from the chicken. It's super, super moist. All right, next thing now is, again, you can just dot them around. So these are in the oven at uh, 200 degrees for about 40 minutes. Then we've got our lovely sweet corn. Again, get that lovely sticky, spicy honey, peri peri honey over it. And then finally, we get the slaw. Any place you see a spare bit of space, just get it in there. So the peri peri sauce, it's just been simmered away there. I brought it down. I'm just gonna finish that off with a little bit of fresh lemon juice. It'll bring a lovely acidity to it. Give that a wee stir, pour it into here. And up here. And then you've got a few sprigs of parsley, just for a little bit of green, just to break that colors up a little bit. And there we have it. African style peri peri chicken. I hope you enjoy.